Nancy, we are here at GCAT 2, a major conference focusing on agricultural research. The conference takes place in Uruguay and you are a sector lead economist at the Inter-American Development Bank. From your Latin American perspective, what are the most urgent topics discussed here? Is there a particular issue raised at this conference which needs immediate follow-up in research circles? This uh, conference has covered very relevant issues for Latin America. And uh, just to summarize the most important ones, uh, I should mention that despite the significant progress socially and economic in Latin America, during the last 10 years, there are still over 170 million people in poverty, of which about 70 are extremely poor, which means they are food insecure. The region is also very vulnerable to climate change and to natural disasters. So the issue of productivity continues to be a key challenge for the region. The region is spending less on research and development than all regions in the world in a proportion. And the needed resources cannot come from the government alone. So we need a very intense effort in the region to mobilize and attract and engage private sector participation in research and innovation and in adoption of that knowledge and in productive activity at the, all the stages of the productive chain. This, co this issue was uh, highlighted during the conference and I think it's going to be a very important part of the new roadmap of the G-Card. At the last G-Card in 2010, the G-Card roadmap was agreed on. Two years later, is there a particular success story from the roadmap's point in Latin America? And also, what are the points which still need an increased attention, especially in your region? The changes that were recommended on the roadmap are very complex and take time. However, you can see a general move in the research agencies in the region toward emphasizing impact and results and to measure the effect on development. And on focalizing the research agendas and have, having the producer in mind and also towards enhancing the scientific capacity of the agencies. However, there's still a lot to be done in terms of building stronger partnerships, in having a more regional outlook, a more consolidated view of the agendas, and involving political will to make sure that at the levels of uh, resource, commitment, and allocation, there is an understanding and a, a willingness to support increases in the effort for research and development in agriculture. The conference has a special focus on agricultural research for the benefit of smallholders. At IDB, are there specific mechanisms applied in your projects to ensure inclusion of the rural poor? The IDB strategy for agriculture is mainly focused on increasing the food supply, increasing food production in the region as a means of giving economic opportunity, increasing sustainable agriculture and at the same time protecting the vulnerable segments of the population. We have operations in agriculture in most countries of Latin America where we assist the governments in the provision of services for agriculture like uh, agricultural health and food safety systems. We have land title and management programs, investment in irrigation, information systems, rural infrastructure like energy, roads. We serve the region's farm systems, the majority of which are in small and medium landholders. You are also IDB's focal point in the network of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. Could you share a best practice example with the platform members from IDB's research project successfully including rural smallholders? We have several instruments that we use for working with governments and also uh, with our private sector products. But as an example of uh, a program that 
works directly with smallholders. I could raise the type of projects that we finance. We have several of these in the region that involve temporary direct support programs to promote technology adoption and market access and cluster formation, specifically designed for small to very small farmers with access to minimum level of uh, productive assets. One example of, the, of those is the APAGRO program in Nicaragua, for instance, where the beneficiary is a typical beneficiary is a woman, very poor, with no assets, that will receive training, technical assistance, and basic instruments for work, like uh, seeds, or uh, an animal, or a, a tree, together, plus the training to manage these resources and to be able to associate with others in order to have a say in, the, in their small markets.